welcome here at the hydrogen fuel cells and batteries exhibit here on the Hanover yes, Fair. Bad. I see several took their coffee and took a seat or two. If you'd like to join us, we have a small presentation and uh, we're talking about um, the higher integration of hydrogen fuel cells and electromobility in Europe, as you can see here in the presentation. Therefore, help me welcome the office coordinator of higher, Miss Marake Rayel. Thank Welcome. You. I would like to give you a hand, but you're injured. You can, you can. I do everything left <laughs> to <you>. now. So. <laughs> so is this from the lobby work? Uh, this is of uh, yeah the result of uh, more aggressive lobbying in Brussels, as uh, we call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, as I can see, I don't want to look at the other ones <laughs> where you had the, uh, the fight with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, could you please so, uh, be so kind, giving an overview about your work and your company? Well, um, Hire is in a partnership. It's, a, it's not a company. Well, I think maybe we operate a bit as a company in that we yeah. uh, really seek to uh, achieve uh, results with uh, everything uh, we do and then uh, not in the long term, but in the short term. Uh, Hire was uh, set up as a partnership of regions in 2008 to support the deployment of hydrogen and fuel cell applications uh, in uh, local communities, regional this, this and local communities. This was the communities. basic idea in 2006 to, to, to have this organization helping hydrogen getting forward. Yeah, in 2008, about the same time as the fuel cell and hydrogen uh, joint undertaking was set up because uh, at this program was also foreseen that large-scale demonstration projects would take place. And of course, the locations where these larger scale demonstrations are taking place now uh, are uh, supported by regions and cities uh, throughout Europe. So in 2008, we started with nine. Now we are almost 40. Uh, over all these years, uh, a steady increase in interest in hydrogen and uh, fuel cells and Basically, what we cover with our activities, of course, is the monitoring of every uh, hydrogen and fuel cell uh, development uh, throughout Europe. And uh, in 2011, we were asked by the Commission to also broaden that to the battery and uh, recharging infrastructure. Because most of our representatives in these regions and cities are, of course, busy with both uh, clean or zero emission uh, technologies. So you're working successfully, like it sounds, because uh, you're spreading up in all over Europe. I saw just a few countries were left were not represented. Well, th well, that's very kind to say. I'm, I'm not yet satisfied with <laughs> what we are representing, actually. We are in 14 countries. Europe has 28, so we, have, we are halfway. We still need a bigger coverage, I think, in the new member states. In some of the uh, uh, countries, uh, Austria is not represented, much to our surprise. Now Denmark is coming in, but that took a while as well. But still, I think we uh, need to convince uh, at least uh, the other 230 regions that are still not engaged with us uh, to, of course, bec uh, come on board in the, um, uh, in the near future in order to really uh, support this larger scale uh, rollout. So what kind of feedback do you get from all those uh, positions in Europe? Because every country demands another structure or has another structure. So uh, what is the kind of feedback? What do you see? What are the kind of results you can have now right in your hand? Well, first of all, I think there is, of course, a lot happening. And I have a, a very, a very high respect of my colleagues in local and regional governments that stick their neck out, explain the technology to politicians over and over again with the increasing number of elections, local elections that we are seeing, of course. So there is an, uh, a very big commitment of the colleagues in the regions that are engaged in higher to move this technology forward. But what we, of course, uh, need as well, and I think that's why we are keen uh, to be part of this um, uh, group exhibit uh, every year since uh, the start of our uh, partnership as well, is to engage with industry to do this in the most effective way. 
we need to make sure that we understand where industry is going, where indeed the support of local and regional governments uh, can work best. So um, this is a kind of networking idea then. If, mm. you, if you want to support regional politicians and regional industry, you have to act how? <laughs> <laughs> Aiming higher, I would ah. say. Uh, well, the explanation of these technologies indeed at the yeah. current stage where they are still uh, perceived as expensive, where infrastructure uh, uh, deployment is only starting as we see in some countries, um, it needs a lot of uh, uh, joint effort in the regions and cities to make sure that the right stakeholders are engaged, uh, are, are kept engaged. I think that is definitely something we are working on. But also to work with industry to explain how the pace and how uh, the deployment will happen in the coming years. So where we should point with measures in the best way to follow this deployment uh, uh, most effectively. So, so giving the industry the idea what to produce to help the local authorities, for example. So there are also rules coming, for example, from Brussels with new ideas, with aims. Yes, well, that's the other part, of course. I think on the, on the local level with industry, we have to understand where we can support. For example, regions and cities uh, have a jurisdiction in public fleets. So yeah. we can help uh, at least steer the choices in uh, public uh, procurement of vehicles, for exa example, of uh, fleets that we can control, so to say. Bus fleets, taxi fleets, uh, public government fleets. So the vehicles need then to be adapted to that kind of, uh, uh, that type of fleet. Uh, the governments uh, nowadays in uh, economic constraint times uh, are not uh, driving around in the biggest cars or in SUVs or in um, uh, large sedans. What they are looking for is indeed a car that demonstrates that it's ecologically um, friendly and that also the, um, uh, the size of the car reflects the current... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. L like riding Budgets. a bicycle, for example, or having a fuel cell in his car, this is the right direction and far away from the SUV, for example. Well, yeah. I think uh, for uh, public fleets, it definitely uh, comes down to uh, choosing the right vehicles. For buses, of course, it's a bit uh, different. Uh, there you have uh, uh, what we see now currently in Europe, the 10 cities that are engaged recently, uh, Aberdeen, um, became also part of these okay. uh, cities that have uh, fuel cell bus fleets. Well, which cities are also in, in, inside this experimental phase? Well, I think since 10 years we have seen very successful fuel cell bus deployment uh, programs, uh, starting with uh, full fuel cell powered buses already in uh, 2002, 2003, when the first Cute programs and high fleet cute. Uh, the Actos in Iceland, of course, was an, uh, a big uh, program as well. And uh, over the years, we have seen the, the hybridization of these buses to bring down the cost, to bring down the uh, um, also the, uh, the amount of hydrogen that these buses uh, require. And uh, up to now, we have uh, about 10 cit cities that have implemented these buses in normal bus services. So it's moving out of, of demonstration, going into real operations. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that we need to uh, uh, continue and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, contain so, uh, also. Um, usually, small cities don't have that much money to invent the new technologies, which are mostly expensive. But with the hydrogen fuel cells and batteries technology right now. Do you see there's a kind of break even into lowering the price that also small cities can consider um, filling their fleet with hydrogen fuel cells instead of burning oil? Well, I think we have seen the price of, of fuel cells, of course, uh, come down very quickly. And I think also the cost of fuel cell buses over the last three years has almost halved. Uh, that, that is a real uh, steep decrease of uh, cost. So that is really impressive. And you see also smaller 
uh, uh, local uh, regional governments deciding on this technology. For example, one of the cities that is now embarking on fuel cell bus deployment is uh, uh, the area of San Remo, beautiful area, beautiful bus route also in, uh, in Liguria, in Italy. And there they are looking at substituting trolley buses because the trolley bus system and renovating the trolley bus system um, seems to cost already more than implementing and substituting a complete fleet of 20 buses uh, by fuel cell buses. So indeed, it's becoming cost effective uh, in confrontation with the other zero emission technologies like the trolley bus. So that's encouraging, yes. Yeah, this is very encouraging. We, we have here an open round. So everybody who's sitting here in the forum can also put a question here to the stage. If there is a question, just Lift your hand, give a sign, and uh, we can react on it. So um, going back to the theme, um, it sounds like this is a very good kind of marketing, getting the local authorities changing their fleets. So everybody like me too, I'm driving also a fuel car, not uh, an oil car, not, not a fuel cell ones. If I could see that there are buses driving around and other cars, the taxis, like, like you mentioned, is, uh, is this the step what is to reach? Is this the way people should think about uh, more this kind of technology in usage? Well, I think we have also collectively, uh, the EU has an ambition to have the number of uh, conventional fueled cars in Europe, uh, European cities by 2030. I think uh, uh, that was also an uh, ambition uh, in uh, uh, some of the renewable packages that the Commission puts out with regards to the use of renewable energy in transport by 2020. But in order to get there, I, le I mean, that's, that's only uh, uh, 15 uh, years from now. That's not too much. I mean, I've been running around at this uh, group exhibit for 10 years. It, it seems yesterday when we started here. So that's not a lot of time. If we really want to follow through this ambition with the Commission, the support of local governments, we need to find out indeed what works and what type of fleets we can target in order to increase the numbers. And we are monitoring those uh, type of support and al also the deployment of these cars very carefully uh, by uh, setting up uh, together with the Commission uh, two years ago the European Electromobility Observatory. That's an uh, exercise in which we try to monitor uh, the number of cars that is um, evolving in, uh, in different member states, uh, battery-powered uh, cars, fuel cell-powered uh, uh, cars, the recharging infrastructure deployment, hydrogen station uh, deployment. We are the first to map the public um, accessible uh, hydrogen stations in Europe. So in order to see what actually works and how we can accelerate indeed the uptake of people yeah, like you yeah. and me, I'm mm -hmm. not driving a fuel cell car yet, which is really incredible. I mean, we have been promoting this. And we, we I could feel buy we some there over there. Indeed, yeah. I would be happy to drive <laughs> one back to Brussels because also <laughs> the visibility of these cars in Brussels yeah. is still very poor. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. We only have one car driving around once in a while in Brussels to show to all these policy makers that the so technology works. Uh, wha what is the result of uh, this kind of monitoring? Uh, is there someone in Europe, a country, for example, leading in this technology? Or is there a situation in Europe where you can say, this is the way we should go more intense or this is the way it should be, given an example for the rest of Europe? Well, I think what we always say also with uh, the energy um, uh, use uh, development, every country, of course, is different. And that in, in this case, with the deployment of, of battery and, and fuel cell and also the uh, charging and, and hydrogen uh, infrastructure, you see these differences. And always, of course, this country, Germany, is come up as the country that leads the pack. But I have to say, over the last three years, when... Uh, higher also looked beyond the support of the joint undertaking uh, for fuel cell and hydrogen uh, projects, looking into other EU funding projects to uh, accelerate the deployment uh, of, for example, hydrogen infrastructure. 
we found that um, indeed some support programs can really accelerate the, mm. the thoughts and also the strategic planning of hydrogen infrastructure. For example, uh, Hire initiated the first hydrogen infrastructure project under the Trans-European Network for Transport program. Uh, we sat down with a few regions, uh, with a few national representatives, with industry and said, well, could we come up with uh, the so-called corridor deployment of hydrogen infrastructure, hydrogen station uh, infrastructure development. And then uh, a few countries that were not yet engaged as much as Germany, as Denmark or others, also uh, expressed their interest uh, because of this opportunity in the 10T program to work on alternative fuels uh, deployment uh, so to step is, in. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it is uh, the infrastructure mainly which should be expanded uh, within the uh, shortest future that we can go for the hydrogen uh, cars. Well, it's always. Oh, for the battery cars. I think yeah. it's, it, it depends on who you talk to. The, the car companies, of course, are saying we need more infrastructure, and the <laughs> infrastructure people say, yeah, but if we have no cars, it's no use for us to build the infrastructure. Well, I think these type of strategic planning that I mentioned under the 10T program, uh, the hydrogen uh, infrastructure for transport projects that resulted from these. Uh, talks with uh, regional and national authorities and industry. Uh, the HIT project, you find uh, information also in our stand. We are strategically located this year between the electromobility uh, part of the whole and uh, the more fuel cell, hydrogen and battery uh, activities uh, here in this group exhibit. But the HIT project, I think, really demonstrates that if national governments get together with their own stakeholders, industry, infrastructure companies, and with the car OEMs uh, to see where the infrastructure uh, deployment could best uh, take place in the coming years in order to uh, sustainably roll out, economically sustainably, uh, sustainable, but also environmental sustainable, so linked yeah. to the cleaner energy sources, that that really could engage uh, a lot more uh, national governments than the ones we are always pointing at. So with the HIT project, we have now a lineup of seven countries that are harmonizing their hydrogen infrastructure planning, which three years ago, even for my own country, the Netherlands, I never would have thought. So things are picking up uh, thanks to indeed EU funding, but also thanks to an increasing uh, cooperation and uh, dialogue between industry and, uh, and uh, government. So uh, this, this is the way for the last sentence now, this is the way to get the industry and society and the government into more the theme of renewable energy in complete and in electromobility then. It's a collective effort. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I'd like to uh, invite all the uh, persons to your booth, which is just around the corner behind yeah. on the left side. And uh, there's a lot of place and you can have also a coffee, uh, coffee or some free drinks there. The girls are running around and giving uh, you what you like to drink. If you want to get deeper into the, uh, into the theme, are you reachable right now there? Uh, well, not now, but my colleague Henry Wassung and uh, myself and also uh, uh, our other staff. Uh, the rest of the week will be there as uh, well. Sabrine Skiker and uh, Ahmed Asam Ali, oh, uh, also from uh, the European Hydrogen Association, uh, will be uh, available uh, for all questions, of course. Very fine. Froyak? Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We see you during the fair. Yes. Bye, Alexander.